you for those examples of the FBI's good work in your opening statement. I think we all appreciated uh, what the FBI has done. Uh, my first question is this. Would you reopen the Clinton investigation if you discovered new information uh, that was both relevant and substantial? It is hard for me to answer. In the abstract, we would certainly look at any new and substantial information. Yeah. In general, and let's impersonalize it, in general, if you discovered new information that was substantial and relevant, you would reopen an investigation, would you not? Again, even in general, I don't think we can answer that in the abstract. What we can say is if people, any investigation, if people have new and substantial information, we would like to see it so we can make an evaluation. Okay. Uh, let me give you some examples and mention several new developments that I think have occurred and ask you if you have become aware of them. Uh, the first example is what the chairman mentioned a while ago. An employee at a company that managed former Secretary Clinton's private email server said, quote, I need to strip out a VIP's, very VIP, email address from a bunch of archived emails. Basically, they don't want the VIP's email address exposed to anyone. I assume you are aware of that. I am aware of that. Okay. The same employee called a new retention policy designed to delete emails after 60 days a, quote, Hillary cover-up cover up operation. And you saw that, did you not? Say the last. I am sorry, Mr. Smith, I couldn't yeah. do the Same employee called a new retention policy designed to delete emails after 60 days a Hillary cover-up operation. Okay. You saw that? I don't know that particular language. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We will get you the source, but you can take my word for it that that is what he said. I will. <laughs> Another example, a former Clinton Foundation employee who also managed the Clinton server destroyed devices used by former Secretary Clinton by smashing them with a hammer. You are aware of that? Yes. Okay. Uh, two employees of the company that managed former Secretary Clinton's server recently pled the Fifth Amendment to Congress to avoid self-incrimination. You are aware of that? Yes. Okay. And then lastly, 15,000 more work-related emails were discovered, though there had been an attempt to wrongly delete them. And you are aware of that? I think we, I think we discovered them. Right. Uh, to me, uh, Director Comey, uh, what I have cited are not the actions of innocent people. There is a distinct possibility that Mrs. Clinton or her staff directed others to destroy evidence in a government investigation, which, of course, is against the law. So I would urge you to reopen your investigation. Do you want to comment on that? I don't. Okay. Uh, I know you can't tell us whether you have or have not, but I believe I have given evidence uh, of new information that is relevant and substantial that would justify reopening the investigation. Uh, my next question is this. I know you have granted immunity to a number of individuals, but if you had new information that is relevant and substantial, you would be able to investigate them further, wouldn't you? Not to quibble, the FBI doesn't grant immunity to anybody. The Department of Justice is able to grant very different kinds of immunity. Yeah, and immunity, if, if new and substantial evidence develops, either that a witness lied under a grant of use immunity or a, under any kind of immunity, of course the Department of Justice can pursue it. Okay. Nobody gets lifetime immunity. Right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Director Comey. Last question is this. As Chairman of the Science Committee, I issued the FBI a subpoena on September 19, 2016. Uh, the due date for a response was two days ago, September 26. Bureau staff has still not provided the requested information and documents. Yesterday we pointed out to them that the Science Committee has jurisdiction over the National Institute of Standards and Technology, which sets standards for the Federal Information Security Modernization Act of 2014. I trust you intend to comply with the subpoena. I intend to continue the conversations we have been having about the subpoena. Yeah. As you know, we have made a lot of documents available to at least six committees. Uh, and the question of whether we should make them additional uh, to available to another committee uh, is something that we are struggling with, but talking to your okay. folks about. And to me, there is no struggle. If we have clear jurisdiction which we can demonstrate, it, I think, obligates you to comply with the subpoena. Yes, sir. We are not trying to be disrespectful. We are just not sure we see the jurisdictional issue the way that your folks do, but we are continuing to talk about it. Okay. Thank you, Director Comey. The gen would the gentleman uh, yield? I uh, will yield to the gentleman from California. Thank you. The chairman of the full committee had asked something earlier, and I just want to point out and ask it to be placed in the record. According to the Maryland Code of Ethics, uh, 
It specifically prohibits a former or current government uh, officer or employee from acting as a counsel uh, to someone that they represented in government. I would like that to be placed in the record. In light of the fact that the, that the Maryland Bar Without has objection, a, it will be made a part of the record. In light of the fact the Maryland Bar has this prohibition, would that have changed uh, your view of allowing her in and saying you had no authority? I am not qualified, nor am I going to answer questions about legal ethics in this forum. The FBI has no basis to exclude somebody from an interview who the subject of the interview says is on their legal team. Okay. Uh, thank you, Director Comey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You will back.